Hi, friends. Today I will be summarizing the book on sex and the young, as I promised. This is what it looks like, but if you open it. So this book was written in 1926, which is a very interesting time. And I think anyone who reads it will realize that uh, it really speaks well for its times. So I happened upon this book by accident. And um, since I'm writing a book on sex, I, it only took me a split second before I decided that I wanted to buy it. So um, then I came to research a little bit about the author. Her name is Mary Carmichael Stopes. And she was a doctor of philosophy, a doctor of science. And if that's not enough, a fellow at the University College of London, a fellow at the Royal Society of Literature and the Linnean and Geological Societies in London as well. She was also an author, a paleobotanist, and a campaigner for eugenics and women's rights. So I did a quick search on what eugenics is, and because I'm not really familiar, so I got this. A set of beliefs and practices that aims at improving the genetic quality of a human population. And it's interesting that this is what she was interested in because it is very much echoed in her writing. And you'll see what I mean in a bit. So the book consists of 20 chapters, which I will only describe very briefly. I'm not going to go into it with much detail because the language is harsh. And there are so many things in there that um, are slightly startling. So she starts off the book by telling the reader where the place of sex in life is. And according to her, sex belongs in the entire lifespan of an individual. She says that if these people who regard sex as sacred fail to reveal its mysteries and initiate the youth, then the youth will find such information on their own and not in such a sacred way. Then she calls to change the word sex because it has been tainted by others into erogamic, which she calls, um, she, she actually made up from two words, uh, Greek words, eros, love, and gamus, marriage. She doesn't necessarily mean that sex be restricted to marriage. However, she's saying that it must be held to a certain standard. But then I guess as I read her book, I think that she would much rather restrict sex to marriage. And I think it's the sign of the times. Next, she outlines the values and dangers of knowing about sex or sex education. She makes it clear that she is against sex education when the recipient is not ready for it, saying that this will create all sorts of distortions in their mind. She opposes sex instructions in school and prefers that it be done under human physiology from a qualified teacher in the field. Then she outlines how to deal with difficult students. And some of her language in this section was a bit concerning as she uses the word defectives for mentally challenged individuals. She talks about circumcision and how she's against it unless it's extremely necessary and then makes her stance very clear against masturbation. She calls it self-abuse. And then she talks about selection of teachers for elementary and high school and the higher percentage of them must be married. And then she suggests ways to control one's sex life until marriage. And these are athletics, ambition, willpower, and self-respect. Then tips on supplying the school library with proper educational books and also book suggestions. She has plenty in there. I don't even know that they're available still, but they might be rare editions. Then she um, 
she also says that movies are corrupt and must be avoided unless the movie has been watched by someone before taking the children to see it. And she says that it is healthy to co-educate the genders, not separate them because they need um, to become familiar with each other. And then at the age of 11 or 12 is when sex can be introduced in the home. She writes, the ethical aspects of right sex behavior are supremely important and that morality and ethics begin at home while biology and heredity begin in the classroom. So the school's role is to introduce the biology aspect and then the ethical aspect is by the parents. An entire chapter on sex disease and how to avoid it and then she goes into this horrible <laughs> chapter about illegitimacy as in like having an illegitimate child. This was a horrible chapter to read for me. Uh, <laughs> I guess I need to look at that. The, uh, she says that the illegitimate child is a course of weakness and racial disharmony, which is to be deplored and so far as possible prevented. And I think this is her background in eurogenics speaking. She says that. And I do have my own stance on this, and I will not be sharing it right now. I will share it in my book whenever that is done. So and then she reasons that we cannot dissociate religion and sex. Perhaps there's a validity to her argument here for um, any believer. However, non-believers might find this uh, a little bit tough of an argument to take in. Um, I guess religion is the reason for sexual suppression or the ideas and beliefs behind some religious um, or some religions. So, yeah, I don't, there, I think she has something there. There's something there that can be worked with. I'm not quite sure what it is. I'll have to sit with it. And then she writes that the absence of any clear cut nationally accepted basis of sexual morality causes not only confusion of thought, but lies at the root of which of much wrongdoing. I think that morality already is already there. It's about recognizing it or actually adopting it into your value system or not. I think the problem that society faces is that some individuals choose not to even have a basic morality about things. And therefore I would say that this is a tough task and maybe too ambitious to implement. Um, Perhaps there's also something there that can be worked with. I'm not quite sure what it is. Also another thing for me to explore. Then the final chapters are about how to inform children about sex. And she says to stick to the basics, do not lie, but do not give out too much information um, for, to, for those who are too young. So especially before the age of six, then just, before puberty, uh, physiological education is necessary. And she uh, really stresses on um, this knowledge being imparted by caregivers or parents rather than having to learn this stuff at school, which makes me wonder about, um, and I guess that requires more research on my part about how uh, sexuality, um, became a thing and was introduced into the schools because I think not all countries have sex education as part of their curriculum. I know my children had that and I never did. Actually, my mom was the one who educated me. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's basically the book. I was somewhat disappointed in it. I thought had found a treasure. In some ways it is. There's some things that you can, um, that feel like they're still like a little bit hanging on to like outdated beliefs. And then there are some things that she says that are more 
uh, forward thinking and evolutionary. So I guess you got to give her credit since this was all the way back then and we are in 2018 now. Okay, this is a wrap and I am not sure what's next, really. There might be a few uh, artist interviews heading my way and otherwise we'll see what other books I'll be sharing. All right, keep reading and have a good rest of the weekend. Bye-bye.